Hello and welcome to another one of my Raspberry Pi tutorials by me, the Raspberry Pi guy. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you some electronics basics and fundamentals. We'll be having a look at some electronic components and what they do and how they work. And uh, we, will, we will learn all about integrated circuits, LEDs, resistors, capacitors. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please check out my other tutorials. It won't be necessary for your Raspberry Pi to be actually on or even working for this tutorial. So I'm just going to teach you just some basic theory. As I said, please subscribe and check out my other videos on my channel and all the links and necessary information, if there is any, will be in the description below. This tutorial is going to be a part of my new series of tutorials called the Getting Started with Raspberry Pi. And basically what I'm going to be focusing on is just Linux in general and basics and fundamentals like this tutorial. I'll be showing you some as I said, electronic fundamentals, and if you have any suggestions or any stuff that you'd like me to do that you're struggling with, like um, program fundamentals, probably one that I'll be doing, but if you have any suggestions, comment below or email me at the guy at gmail.com. Anyway, down to business. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll probably have seen some of the electronic components here. First thing I'm going to show you is a resistor. Now, these are a lot of resistors. These resistors are one kilo ohm. Now resistors are measured in ohms. So you've got ohms, kilo ohms, mega ohms. And uh, basically they do exactly what they say. They resist the current. So let's say I have 3.3 .3 volts going into a circuit that needs 1.7 volts. And if you have anything over 3.3 .3 volts it will damage it, say an LED for example. Then you have to pick the right resistor that, and it will resist the the amount of current, uh, the amount of voltage, so uh, the correct resistor would resist it down to 1.7. Now, as I said, you have to use the correct resistor. In my tutorial using the GPIO Part One, I I show you some resistor theory. I'm not going to go over to that now. It's um, it's fairly, it's not that complex, but it's not easy. I'm going to say, and uh, it's a really useful thing to have once you have, once you've got your head around it. So, also you notice that there's lots of bands on the resistors. There you go, that's in focus. Now, these bands change depending on the resistor value. Also, I'm not going to go into this because it's quite complicated. If you want to learn how to read resistor bands and their code, which is going to be a necessary skill if you're going to be using resistors, then get Googling and just Google resistor, how to read resistor bands or something like that. Okay. I just mentioned LEDs, and here's a whole bag of them, 20 of them to be exact, and they come in all different shapes and sizes, and these are just common LEDs, meaning that they have positive and negative, cathode and anode, if you want to be precise. And uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, you probably know that I have said, make sure you've got your LED in the right way around. So, and it's really important that you do have your LED in the right way around, because LED stands for light emitting diode, and you probably get the light emitting bit, but not the diode bit. And diodes protect your circuit effectively. They allow electricity to pass through one way, but not through the other. So, I, I, diodes you can get them in. Uh, you can get them in just single form, so they're just diodes, and they're really useful for protecting your your circuits, just so you don't get any voltage running the wrong way and damaging damaging any of your stuff. So there's LEDs, and of course they emit light. Okay, onto the next thing that you that I'll be using. Actually, I think I'll be using this all the time in my GPIO tutorials. It's a breadboard, and I've probably explained it in my other tutorials if you viewed them. Really useful little thing. This has got 390 holes, and basically what it allows you to do is prototype quickly and solder freely. And uh, so these are all all of these tracks are connected. Um, underneath with copper railings. So these vertical ones are connected downwards with copper. So if I plug something in here and I plug something in here, they'd still be connected by the copper. Now same with these except these are horizontal. Now except and also they have this break in the middle which he, which is really useful for integrated circuits which I'll talk about later. Now the vertical ones can be used they're mainly used for power and ground rails. I've explained that in some of my other tutorials, 
and this is where you put all your components like your LEDs and stuff. Okay. Next thing I'm going to show you is a good friend of mine, which is the capacitor. And this is what capacitors look like. And a capacitor is a device that's used to store an electronic charge. And uh, here's the boring bit. It consists of one or more pairs of conductors separated by an insulator. Now, there's loads of different types of capacitors. I'm not going to go into the moment. I'm just going to show you some. There's that type of capacitor, that type of capacitor. And they're measured in farads. If you need to know a little bit more about capacitors, then uh, get Googling, as I just said. So, where would you use capacitor? Capacitors are widely used in electronic circuits for blocking direct current, DC, while allowing al alternating current, AC, to pass. If you don't know what direct current and, AC, and um, AC is, alternating current, Google them. Direct current is what we'll be using on the Raspberry Pi, just, this is just a hint, and alternating current is what's actually in the wall sockets. So, and uh, your Raspberry Pi actually has a capacitor, this one here. This smooths out the 5 volt input, which is mainly what capacitors are used for, smoothing the output of power supplies. And they can be used to tune radios to particular frequencies, and tons of other things, so they're really useful. It's good to have a variety of them. Now, next thing I'm going to show you is an integrated circuit, which is your old friend here. Now, they pretty much look all the same, but they all have different jobs. Now, an integrated circuit is an electronic circuit formed on a small piece of semiconducting material. Conducting means that it conducts electricity, and so this is semiconducting, which means that it can change whether it conducts electricity or not. And, and it performs the same function as a larger circuit, but it's made from discrete components, which is made basically means it's made from smaller components. So this is a really neat way. This one that I've got in my hands is a PCF8591 analog to digital converter. And, uh, but you can get them to do all sorts of things. This one, for example, it's just on its phone packaging, is an L293D motor driver that I haven't got working yet. And basically, it's going to do exactly what it says, and it's going to let me control motors with my Raspberry Pi. Okay, here we go. Next thing. Now, it's your good old friend, the button. Probably, you've probably seen my other tutorial, uh, you getting inputs from buttons. And if you haven't, there's a link in the tutorial. I'll show you how to get your Pi to display a message when this button is pressed. Now, as you know, the GPIO pins can either be set as inputs or outputs. Outputs meaning that they output a voltage, which could be used to flash an LED, for example. And inputs mean that they gather information from the GPIO pins. So this, when it's on, it's like that. One, zero. On, off. So you don't need to know too much about buttons. The next thing you're going to need to know about is sensors, and these are the fun things. The sensor that I've got here is an ultrasonic distance sensor, which I'm yet to be getting to, to work with my Raspberry Pi. Basically what it does, it fires off an ultrasonic beam, and if the ultrasonic beam hits something, it bounces back and then is received by the receiver. You can then calculate, um, you can then calculate how far it is away and you'll get an analog input. If you and if you don't know what analog input is, I explain it in my getting analog inputs videos using an A, A to D converter. It's one of my other videos, quite short. You can uh, watch it and learn what analog and digital inputs are. So sensors, they do exactly what they say and they sense things and then they they're inputs. So as I said, this sensor's distance. You get tons of different ones. You can sense temperature, light, one of my other tutorials which I'm going to do in the future, I'll, I'll wire up a photo sensor, which is a light sensor. And, um, yeah, so sensors are really useful. Now, the most obvious one is wire. Now, wire is how you're going to wire up your things if you don't need any resistance or anything. Wire is great. If you're just starting out with electronics, I reckon you probably can't see it from there, I reckon getting single core wire, that means they've just got one one core of metal going round it. If you get uh, s multiple cores or stranded cores, they can, uh, it's quite annoying and hard to put into your breadboard. You have to twist them round and stuff. But um, it, it does, stranded core does work, though 
it's a bit cheaper. So if you want to keep your price down, you're going to have to just be annoyed by the stranded calls. And that's basically it. But there's a whole lot more that you can learn about electronic components via Google on the internet. I'll I might even do a second one explaining some more advanced electronic components. As I said, there's going to be more to this getting started with the Raspberry Pi series. I'll be talking about programming fundamentals. Might do a bit of Scratch and some Python. We might even have a look at some C and C++. And uh, I hope you tell all your friends about my videos and you subscribe. And uh, watch out for my future videos. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if I have any comments or or problems or you'd like to, me to do anything, don't hesitate to post away at the bottom of this video or contact me at the Guy at gmail.com. Thanks again and bye.